Hey, welcome back everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I'm U.S. Jester. My name is Junior. Um, today we're going to be reviewing uh, Hot Toys 1-6 scale, the Batman regular version. And this is an unusual format for me where, as you can see, the figure's already out. This part of the video is actually about a week after I received the figure and made my initial review. Now, during the course of the review, I found out something about the figure about the product that really pissed me off. Um, in the in that part of the video, you will probably hear my note of excitement in the in my voice, how much I I'm really liking the the piece and everything. And then I started to, and then I um so what is going on is that this figure comes with a holster in the leg that that's supposed to have a pistol. Over here. Now I don't remember when he used it in the movie. I don't even know if it's there uh, in the actual uh, movie that we saw. But there's a pistol that comes in here, and I can't remember if it's a smoke pistol or anything like that. But Hot Toys did produce it. It's it's there on the reviews for the deluxe version. The deluxe version carries the pistol, but not the regular version. So the regular version, you're going to be left with. A holster and a thigh that has nothing in it right it's a small piece it's not like it's gonna break break the profit margin for hot toys well the other thing too is this figure comes with a cape that's supposed to go on uh, on the on the figure if you were to have him riding on the bat cycle now why would you include an item for the regular version, uh, such as a cape for the bat cycle, if there's a possibility your 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 customers are never gonna buy the bat cycle, why would you not include that cape with the bat cycle and include the pistol on this one, which clearly belongs in the figure because the holster is there? Why would you put it and in, in uh, only for the deluxe version? Uh, when you've already produced it, designed it, and everything, and released it. This act of a company is very distressing to me. I feel like um, this is one of the things, one of the moves a company makes that really pisses me off because it's a blatant move that feels like it's to rip off customers. You know, like they're saying, well, there's a pistol, as you can see, but we're only going to put that in the in the deluxe version. Now, did I notice this? Did I not read the, the items included in it? No, I did not. Unfortunately, I did not. Because in the past, I've never felt, I've never seen Hot Toys do a move like this, where an item obviously belongs in the figure, and yet not included. It's this is not like a Hot Toys Iron Man where they had two heads, or you were expecting two heads, one with the helmet can be removed, exposing the face and everything. Because that's that's kind of like an alternative look, right? Um, so it's not like it's not like you're gonna be expecting two heads with an Iron Man figure, one with a removable faceplate or not. You can have an Iron Man figure with just a helmet. If you have a figure that has a holster, but without a gun, you're wondering why did not, didn't they produce a gun? It's like basically producing a, a soldier with all these uh, a, a holster, a gun holster without a gun. Why would you do that and then only produce that for the deluxe version? Um, so it's not that I don't like this figure. It's not like I don't like the product. You're going to see in the preceding video that I shot a week ago that I'm very, very enthusiastic about the figure. And I feel like in hand, this figure, this product is actually better than in art. I don't have the in art product, but I've seen the reviews. I've seen the comparisons. Um, and I, I still feel like in hand, I this looks proportionally better than in arts. Even the head. I feel like the head on this one is properly scaled. It looks like a human person standing in front of me. Um, but that scummy move by a company um, 
depriving their customers of an item that clearly belongs in the figure and putting it behind a deluxe version. This is just so wrong that they did that. Now you almost can't see it. If you display it, you almost can't see it. And you I'll probably forget all about it. Like in a year, two years, five years from now, until I put it out and say and I wonder why why is the pistol? Did I lose the pistol? And then I'll remember that it was never ever included with this product. Um, I'm gonna stop my rant at this point and just go ahead and paste um, the actual review. Um, I have to apologize that the review is kind of incomplete. I never got to the part where I I switched out the um, the uh, the gun in his gauntlet for the um, grappling hook and everything. Um, by the time I was getting, I had gotten to the holster and realized it was missing and I had to do the research, my enthusiasm for the product severely dropped. Not because it's a bad product, it's just the company's move. It just really, really soured me on, on that. I really don't like it when companies do that. I feel like they are they have rested way too long on their past achievements and their past successes. And they feel like they can do whatever they want um, with their releases and all that stuff. But at this price point, at that uh, anything that's over two hundred and fifty, I get very, very critical. Now, of not only the product but also of the company. This is the reason why, even with Mezco, it's taking me so long to try to buy more from the company because I am so disillusioned by that company's moves and that and their standing with their product that I just don't trust them. It's the lack of trust. It's a drop on trust is basically what I'm doing is happening here for me. So I just do not advocate buying any more from Hot Toys. Now I did purchase their um cheaper priced ones from Wolverine and Magneto and and they're cheap I, I have to admit and for the quality they're pr producing it's like 150 and 180 but I'm honestly I'm thinking of canceling those um, uh, I just I just don't want any don't want anything to do with hot toys at this point um, I'm still waiting obviously for the Michael Keaton Batman um, but I don't know. I just don't know. Um, I, going back to it, like I said, it, it, it might be my fault for not reading the complete parts list and everything, but why, why would I need to read all the parts list? Wouldn't you assume that the pistol that goes with the holster should be included with a front product, you know, but I know it's like, you, you know, it's my fault for assuming that it's like, come on. 250 over 250 figure for a hot toys that used to produce really good quality figures with a lot of accessories like the Iron Man Mark III, the first one, the original one that came with so much accessories. That was the hot toys that I remember, not this where they're like penny penny pinching or gatekeeping products so that that people are basically having to go to the deluxe version to get a complete Batman figure. Come on. Anyway. Let, let me go ahead and paste up the um, the original video. Again, I apologize for not completely finishing the review. It's just, I mean, I just wanted to put it out uh, of how I, I feel about the figure. Um, there are some good parts of the review where I was uh, switching out the heads. I found out some really good interesting bits about it to make it easier for you guys. Um, if you're having problems with uh, replacing the head with the um, the face sculpt and the the neck, it's really it's really an uh, an easy way of doing things. So anyway, thank you for watching. Um, if you have decide to stick around for the rest of the video, I do appreciate that. And you guys have a nice day. Goodbye. Hey, welcome back everybody. Welcome back to my channel, Amuse Jester. My name is Junior. Today we're going to be reviewing the Batman from Hot Toys. Finally, it's, it's here. 
Uh, I've been watching a bunch of reviews, a bunch of comparisons with the in-art version. We're not going to be doing that because I cannot afford the in-art version. Um, I just... And this is not my favorite version of the Batman. Um, and I'll, I mean, I'll go by it really quickly, but uh, but I, I can't do that. But I will be bringing up my other Batmans as well. But before we do that, let's... Uh, I'm going to put a little segue on, a, on an earlier review that I did. Uh, and then... Look, uh, because I forgot to do it. So let's look at that really quickly. I'm referring to the tag set upgrade from Ramen Toys for the 1989 Todd McFarlane or McFarlane Toys Batmobile uh, that was released on 112 scale. This is the upgrade version, as you can see. Um, yes, I have two Mesco Batmans. I did not buy two Mesco Batmans. Um, the other one is basically the replacement body, which was a failure at any rate. But, um, so I feel the Mezco Batman fits the height of the Batmobile, uh, better than the actual McFarlane toys. Let me switch to an, uh, a lower uh, view. So here he is. Um, there's the front one and there's a the back one over there. So you can kind of see, I feel like it much, it's much better in scale. Then, um, if I were to bring here's a McFarlane one, um, it's very tall. If you, in case you're wondering about the head, that's the head from the actual the Flash movie where he's older. I just painted the head, it's a really good likeness, as you can see, I think. Um, but he's definitely much taller. And if you want to see how he looks inside the cockpit, I'm ready for that. Here you go, let's open it up, opens up really quick. And look at that, I've got a third Mesco Batman. I don't know why they sent me a third body. Um, I don't know if it was a mistake in their um, communications or whatever, but I did, they did <laughs> remember this set actually comes with three headsets, so uh, I'm not complaining. But it is uh, it does upgrade my opinion about their customer service and how they back up their quality um, because the third one finally did it. Finally, is working. All the joints are just finally good on that it's not that they upgraded the product i just i think i just got lucky in the third one finally you know what there's the charm right anyway why is he off to the side that's because ramen toys is actually developing an inside part of the cockpit and i want to show you guys that if they that once ramen toys does develop that it does it will fit in terms of like there's a second space in there for vicky Vale to sit in there because as you can see, this this part of the canopy actually is it makes the 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 whole canopy inside shrinks it a little bit more. So if the new one fits in good, then it, it, it might work. But then again, then the cockpit won't close. Really, really quickly. I'm sorry it took that long, but let's go into the Hot Toys Batman the Batman review. All right, so we're back for the review, the actual review for the Hot Toys. Uh, the Batman figure. Um, honestly, I, I don't think you guys are going to be seeing a lot more uh, reviews for Hot Toys fig, f uh, products for me. My interest in Hot Toys has kind of dwindled a very, very long time ago. Because they, in my opinion, they kind of failed to deliver DC figures. They concentrated a lot on Marvel, more specifically on the um, MCU, but then more specifically into <laughs> Iron Man. And the hot, and of course Star Wars. So, and DC is kind of my favorite um, lines of all, all out there. Um, but when it comes to when they put out DC and then they put out Batman or Superman, then I'm gonna grab those uh, for sure. Uh, so here's the Batman. I chose Hot Toys rather than In Art. In Art is much more expensive than Hot Toys. Um, in 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 some of their products, it's justified. Like the Gandalf one was really good. The Aragon one is kind of very tempting to the quality craftsmanships. Um, the Joker was okay. I just didn't feel it was okay to upgrade that much in price uh, since I already have the the original Joker from the, the Hot Toys and I'm okay with it. But, um, okay, going back to this one. Packaging... Um, Hot Toys is the only, um, because it's a high-end product, I do keep the boxes with me. Um, so anyway, this is the actual photograph of the actor in his costume. This is the toy itself. This is a slip-on uh, that you can up uh, and remove if you want to. Here's the side. 
here's the back here's the side let me do a really quick unboxing with uh, speed it up so All right, so we'll start with accessories. Why don't we, right? So we'll start off the accessories accessories off of this tray. Um, so you have the bat symbol over here. You have one that's folded. You have uh, the the gun. Um, and there's two of them. One here and then the other one here. You have the a handcuff, um, the grappling hook. Um, some sort of baton and this is for the eyes and then this is the joker card so let's look at them individually it's impressive that it's an act oh impressive um it's an actual card with an actual envelope so I guess I could say it's impressive but um, you know it's cool because then you can have him holding it if you want to so put him back in here this I think it's plastic this is plastic uh, it doesn't fold over or anything like that. There's the detail and paint job. Now, why why am I kind of like getting off of Hot Toys? Um, they still produce a good product but it's not like before where they are almost like pioneers of the industry plus uh, and with the increasing prices you know admittedly it's not their fault that everything everything in the world is increasing in terms of prices but at the same time i feel like oh hot toys has now become overpriced from what they're delivering compared to what they used to deliver before this almost feels like it should bend it does it i'm sorry this almost feels like it should bend and it does because there's these two pins over here um so and there's like two points of movement so i'm assuming you can kind of hinge it down so you can put it in his belt just be very very careful careful because it is plastic and look at how thin those pins are I'm like really pushing it at this point, so I'm not sure if I should. And is there one way? Is one way better than the other? If you, I mean, like, if you're kind of like a nut like I am, that you want to test, test, test it and see how much it would fold, just be very careful when you're doing it. And that's a lot of pressure I'm putting in there right now, so I'm I. Th I, I really don't think I'm going to be putting it in there. So let's just put it back out. Is this a working handcuff? Yes, it is. It does open. That's kind of cool. Um, what else do we want to look into this? Why is this open like that? Um... Oh, I know, because this is the one that goes into the gauntlet of the wrist. So I, I'm assuming he has two because one can, they can both you can have them both on each hand if you want to. Uh, and we'll be going into that later on. Let's uh, look at one first. 
the detail is still there. It's not. It's just that you know, with the amount of detail that in art is producing out there, of course they're a higher priced product. Um, it feels like Hot Toys, and it's been a long time coming. It feels like Hot Toys has been sitting on the um, laurels where they like they've gotten used to being the top at the top because they destroyed Medicom and they destroyed the other Enterbay uh, competitors at a time. Uh, and they kind of like, oh, we're, we're the top, so we don't need to push the limits anymore. And I, you can kind of see that with their Iron Man because the Iron Man 3, the original one, had so much stuff going on in there and then they scaled it down a lot. So... Um, and then they jacked up the price, which I feel like, eh, that's not really the direction I would have went to if you want to keep my loyalty as a customer. And like I said, they concentrated way too much on Iron Man. I love Iron Man, but uh, way too much. Uh, and of course, the prices get, get, kept getting higher and higher. And then they changed the scale in midway. And then they redid everything and like, mm, money grab for me. So I'm, I'm not willing to spend that much money. Um, on something that they should have done in the first place. You know, they should have corrected the scale in the first place and all that stuff. So, and then here's the base. I rarely use bases on my figures because um, if they were uniform, then... I would love it more, but uh, the problem is that they're they're not uniform. Each individual line has their in, in, each individual designs, and that's kind of irritating. And sometimes they're so big, you know, and they only have the big ones. But this is this is kind of like a good size. We'll see more of it. It's got the, the top has a texture on it, a rough texture. Then you see this metallic thing that's accentuating it. It looks good, but of course, Batman is going to be standing on top of it. So I mean. You know, this is this is more interesting to me rather than the top because when he's standing on it, then you can kind of see it's more it's more statuesque, I should say. You know, uh, again, the texture and the metallic finish on the nameplate, and then that's backwards, backwards, and then that one. Then you have the slot for the stand itself, which I'll put on right now, so you can see. All right, so the hands, these are the hands that come with the figure, not including the two hands that's coming with the figure itself. It's got the two fisted hands over here. Nicely detailed, you know, you can't fault uh, um, the details on Hot Toys. Um, it's the accuracy that you're starting to question at this point. Um, this one I'm assuming is for the gun. The grappling gun, I should say. Uh, kind of like an outstretched hand. I don't know why there's these two tips on the... Oh, I wonder... Doesn't Isn't there a scene where he electrocutes somebody? I wonder if that's what it's for. These two tips. Uh, then another hand for the other side. This one, I'm assuming, is for the baton-like looking... Um, accessories, these ones. Is this a flare or a baton? I, I don't know. And then um, it comes with this, which I think is cool because this is easily displayable. So that when he, he um, because it does come with a Bruce Wayne head sculpt, so you can put this on the table. Um, when I first saw the design on this, on this mask, I was I'm, I'm amazed. I still am amazed because this is kind of like a, a good version of a reality-based Batman, rather than the Dark Knight. Even the first one was cool. The, the Batman, the Dark Knight design with the Panther design, and then the second one was too realistic. This one has a good feel of like I don't know. It's, it feels more real than. Dark Knight 
uh, Christopher Nolan's version. And, you, and this texture, man, it feels like leather, or it looks like leather when you look at it. Looking at it, it's got the scratches and everything. This is flawless for me, you know. This is really good. A really good accessory. And then it comes with this um, neck brace over here that you put on when you're putting in the head, the Bruce Wayne head. Uh, and then it comes with um, this um, hair piece. I'll explain that later. Here's the head of Bruce Wayne. Um, I'm okay with it. Does it look like um, the actor? Oh, shoot. I forgot. Robert Pattins Pattinson? Pattinson. Um, the thing is that the dark eyeliner is kind of throwing it off. Um, Hot Toys is usually pretty good. He, they probably, they're usually like in the 85 to 95 percentage in terms of likenesses. Sometimes they, they, they do close, close, close enough. This, this part is probably the best angle. I'm not sure about the front. But then again, I'm not really familiar with Pattinson's face enough to say, oh, that's like him. This this looks good, too. The jawline, I do remember Pattinson does have a very, very strong jawline. This profile looks really good. So I think what's throwing me off here in the front is the um, the dark makeup around the eyes. Because it's hiding a lot of it. But I, there, I think that looks good. Actually... When I was looking at some people's comparisons with in art, uh, Pattinson, I, f looking at this now, I feel like this is a better version. But maybe the Pattinson one would actually look good um, or look better in hand. Um, you know how it is. Sometimes it distorts in the camera. I'll be right back. So I'm looking at some images of Pattinson's. Um, very quickly uh, and all that stuff. Um, the jawline is really good. They did that really good. Um, the eyes, I get, I, like I said, it's throwing me off in the shadows. The hair is what's really throwing me off of the sculpt. Um, they've got the cheeks is a little bit too full, I think, than Pattinson's actually is. The jaw is... A lot of it is really good, I'm going to say. Yeah, I feel like this one's definitely better. Um... It's just the hair throwing me off. So the way this thing works is if you want him to have a more... Um, unbrushed hair, I suppose, or unwashed hair, you can do that. Now, for some reason, that actually improves the sculpt. <laughs> um... The hair is still awful. I feel like that's too... But having the hair come down like this, for some reason, it improves the sculpt for me. So that's pretty cool. And here is the mouthpieces that you replace them with. Man, that is that is really cool. The, the, the detail they have on those teeth. You can even see that there's a mole in there. I wonder if Pattinson does actually have a mole. Uh, so that's got to be intended because here's the other one with the closed version and you can see the mole is still there. A lot of very, very subtle paint application, especially in the sh and the, the beard and everything. All right, so we're looking firsthand at a very, very unflattering uh, figure, uh, unflattering look at this figure, right? Because, you know, if you pose it, it will definitely change it and everything. But so first impression, when I pull this off, when I pull this off of the packaging and I'm the first thing I'm going to look at is the head, right? Because... Okay, so the first thing I'm going to look at is the head, right? Because that's that's always the first thing that's going to capture my eye. And I don't know why, but for some reason, it just stood out to me that this skin tone is so dark. Um, I feel like they could have lightened it a little bit. But it's the same paint job as the Unmasked one. And 
I don't mind it on this one, but here it's just so dark. And um, why does it look like it's kind of off to the side? So you kind of have to jiggle a little bit and uh, make sure that mouthpiece is on there. I, I know that looking at, at an earlier review, there is an issue because if you look at the the face mask, the, the mouth plates over here, you can see the bottom part of the cowl is part is co connected to the flesh tone. And I mean, they try to do a good job as much as they can to make sure it's connecting, but there's always going to be You're always going to have to encounter a gap like that. Is that going to bother you guys? That's up to you to decide. You know, you, you can kind of push it a little bit. Make sure it's connecting. Um, then the other thing too is like when he's looking up, of course, he's going to have a gap over there. I don't know what could have been the fix for that. But what can you do? You know, it's like it's a toy. Um, they're going to do the best they can to make it work. So just push it up as much as you can to make sure... You have as little gap as possible, but at the same time as you're moving it, you're of course messing around with it. So pose it, push it up to make sure if that's bothering you. So let's. So there's a face up close. See, in this light, the flesh tone doesn't bother me as much, but it's just an unnatural lighting. It's just so dark. I don't know why. Um. The cool thing about this is you can kind of see in the paint application that they did is that around the eyes it's a matte is a more matte black than the actual cowl so it does stand out um it's the small details like that that you kind of start to get impressed with the figure this is on a magnet so you can just pull it off and this one is on a peg now, I, I believe there's an issue with this peg with some with some of the people having because it was being so tight or an issue being removing it it's not it's not so bad it actually come off came off a lot easier than I expected more so maybe that could be a problem later on but I, I can't really say so here's the back and here's the front oh sorry here's the back of it and here's the front of it and there's the connection piece. The connection piece goes all the way down there. You just push it down. Let's see how much pushing it needs there. So just line it up so that the third that you can still see three over there, and that's how it's properly connected. And you just put back the head again. I like the magnet system because you're not restricted by having the hole in here so that you have a lot of range so that's kind of cool um, the body of course that one I think this should be removable it is I don't know why they have This part, this is a more flatter one than the one that goes into the chest. I suppose you might want to display it as a batarang. That's why it's more straightened out. And because this thing is so small and because of the curve of his chest, they can't just make it into a hinge. Um, it just won't fit properly. Um, I mean, they could have, but then having this part right here, I feel like this is a better solution because then you can feel you can see the curvature of the chest rather than having uh, to indent the whole thing. There you go. Here's the shoulder plates over here. The shoulder plate is connected. Shoulder plate is connected via Velcro. 
This is a plastic piece over the cloth. Another plastic piece over the cloth. I'm impressed by this right here, the cord that goes down right like so. Um, let me remove the tape. So just pull off the hand and pull this off. So you can pull this off too. And that's how the that uniform looks. So I'm, I really do like that small detail. Small details always kind of like impress me. So I feel like that's what the smaller details kind of what is what builds the figure. Um, it's kind of like um, I compare it to like when you're painting an object, and you and the the reality of the object is it's it's is that in reality it's got a hundred shades of color. But then when you're painting it, you're limited to 10 or you limit yourself to 10. So um, you can build it, but the closer you get to the reality, the more um, the more interesting it is. So here's the side of it. Here's the movement, by the way, from the shoulder. The shoulder, even with this shoulder plate, uh, can go about that high until it starts restricting your movement. There is a bunch of creases over here, so that would help, so it's not tight. Um, it would help with the range of movement, so it's not like f going down, fighting you down or something like that. And even with that uh, plate, that's how much more movement you can get, because it's this is going to restrict you. This is hard plastic. Um, and off to the side, the movement of the elbow goes like this, that high. And then afterwards, you're going to be fighting the, the cloth and the hard sculpture of the gauntlet as well. Of course, the movement of the hands goes back and forth. It's a hot toy, so you can you have enough movement over here. Um, I don't have any ratchets on my articulation, so um, I don't know if there is, and mine's just, uh, is this like supposed to come off? I don't know if, uh, you know if if there is and mine just comes off. Uh, and, and this one came off the clip, which is kind of interesting because now we see how it's it just clips on. So that's kind of cool. Cool because it's almost like real, um, rather than just like molded into the belt. Um, and then of course here's the. Let's put him on the T pose as much as we can. Here's the uh, fabric of the body. See, it's a believable design uh, and everything. The zippers over here. Here's the design to make it more maneuverable, I suppose. And this is basically what um, his Kevlar would be to stop any kind of impact, I guess, on the body. Um, the weird thing is like in the photos, it seems like this is too wide, but like this. You know, um, honestly, it doesn't seem like it is too wide. I feel like it's a good. Um, I'm sorry that um, if the, vi the picture or the video kind of presents it that way, that this is too wide. All I can say is that in hand, it it looks proportional. If this is proportional, I kind of hate to think what in art is because in art feel looks like it's a thinner version than this one. But in life or in reality, this looks proportional to what I've seen or comparable to what I've seen with Pattinson's Batman. Where I mean, and you can you know. His version is thin, so if this is right, then um, then in arts would be way too thin, I think. Um, and then let's let's go ahead and look at the belt. Really nice detail and everything that also clips on. This is closed plastic, closed plastic. This is a belt loop for I suppose one of those um, batons. This one is. What would this one be for? He had some sort of gun, but... Huh. 
Which one of the accessories would go into this loop? Isn't it? That's kind of interesting. I'm going to have to look into that. Um, here's for the other ones. I'm going to have to look really quickly. See what's going on here. So I'm assuming this one goes in here, but... also on a clip on this one is not on a clip on so I'm assuming that goes like that and then I'm, I'm gonna put this in here and then I'm gonna leave it on there kind of interesting this is kind of loose so that might fall off um, so articulation on the waist this is very thick um padding in there there's a padding in there that's very thick so i'm really not expecting much see the thing is when you have thick padding and you have restrictive clothing like this on a small scale this is when i think the ratchets on the joints would would have helped um and there isn't any this as as soft as this is as i and we all know there's some sort of articulation in there it's nothing it's 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 useless, completely useless. Can't do anything with it because of the padding. I mean, it looks good and, and accurate and everything, but because of that padding, you just basically destroy the articulation on anything on the chest. I mean, like on the waist, you can't even do anything. So on the on, on the hips over here, in terms of movement, jeez. You can kind of put it up like this but then this is the the fight of the 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 fabric fighting the figure and for the knee bend now that's weird the, the knee has a very very short soft ratchet and because of that ratchet and because of the looseness of the of the garment you can hold that pose so I'm assuming if you have the 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 motorcycle you can kind of do that pose if you want to. I'm going to have to oh well, there we go. And the boot construct man that that just like at this point now that's really disappointing because if they can put the ratchet on the knee why couldn't they put ratchet on the elbow on the leg articulation over here on the waist make this ratchet over here like really strong like something metallic or something like that something that click 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 that way you can hold it even because as tight so this whole um, costume is one piece and that probably definitely contributed to the restriction that you're going to be getting because because of that you can't when you're bending it forward it's going to pull in the back so even if you had that articulation and also if even if you do this might start getting destroyed in the future so maybe they're thinking of those too uh, in terms of the sideways movement of the of the legs naturally like that any because there's no ratchet it's not like it's going to hold a pose or anything you know that's just this is the disappointment that I'm see talking about when you're handling the figure because a ratchet joint would have definitely helped this figure a lot. And if they if they can put ratchets on a certain in certain joints, they should have put it in all of them. Um, the articulation is really good over here. It's really tight and nice. You can go down by that much. Of course, movement over here. The design of the of the boot over here is really good, so it's really hiding that joint. The cape is soft. The wire is thin. Um, when you have wires on a cape, you'll never be able to a accomplish that natural drape. The this part. Um,
you can mess around with it so it, it drapes more naturally. So it, it, it looks good like that. Yeah, see? And that's just in a few seconds of, of futzing with it. So it, it looks good like that. This thing's supposed to be more pointed, I believe. The How the, the cape goes in. I believe this is removable, right? Or is that in art? Let's see. I don't think that's removable. No, it's not because I can see a strap in there. It's I, I'm pretty sure that's removable. Alright, so the bit, I, I looked at instructions and it is removable, but the angle of movement is supposed to be downward, like so the angle is going this way, from what I can see in the instructions. Let's remove the head. Okay, it's on a vel Velcro, that's why it was so tight in there. And yes, you need to remove it. This should have been a magnet. But maybe the Velcro provides a stronger one. But the the way the reason why you need to remove that is because this cape actually is connected to that Velcro system. So don't pull at this point. See, notice that this is shiny. That's because that's the Velcro that's connected to the cape. So you put your finger underneath there and pull it off like that. Okay, so that's the cape, and this cape, I'm trying to look at the difference between these two capes. Oh, look at that. This is a, this is a much smaller cape compared to this one, and this one has the pleats. I wonder if this is for the um, motorcycle. Kind of interesting because it's got this only has three wires in it this one has five one two three four and five so I don't think I'll be using this um, let's replace this with the actual So put the head and then the sleeve of the neck and then push this in. So the reason why I'm doing this is because um, the very first review that I saw was from Justin where he was having an issue with this neck. So what I want to do is like take off everything that's hampering the connection and I want to see exactly how strong is the connection supposed to be because it's not a lot and you, you, don't, you don't really need to push it a lot. It's barely gripping on there. So now that I know how much it goes in, I can go ahead and pull this 
and because you are supposed to connect it with this on and I believe with this on and this is also connected using a velcro system now the problem with the velcro system um, is the more you you keep on pulling it and all that stuff um, the bigger your problem is going to be later on because it's just going to keep pulling all that stuff and also see how you need to line it up as much as you can I think the issue is because of the the fiber the cloth and all that stuff is creating enough of a space that it's pushing everything up so I'm gonna do this off camera All right, so I have a tip for you guys. I don't know if you guys have seen this. So one of the problem that that's occurring when you have this on and you do it in this method, you put the head on, you put the sleeve on and you push it in. The problem is when you do that, the bottom of this lip is going to hit the, the the side of the cloth. Let me let me remove this. What's, get, what's happening is when you push it in, this is what's happening. See how the lip of that collar is now pushing against the cloth? And that's preventing you from pushing it down further. So I suggest, and I haven't tried this yet, but it seems like it's a, it might work, is put the sleeve on into the collar first, secure that area, and then connect this to the figure. See how it's, even with that, it's pushing it up. So you need to you need to fix that problem first. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. See, it's, this is a problem. So attach the back part like that, and then when you're putting this on, make sure that the cloth is in between in between this and this. It's a hassle, for sure. There. Okay, now I'll put this back on like that. See how much slower that thing sits now? Now put on the head. That's how you do it. Look at that. And guess what? I forgot to put the cape on. Ah! But look, that's made it so much more easy. Oh, and then it pops off easy because the connection is like really loose. Hold on a second. Okay, it's not really loose, you just push it in because we both, we know when I had this off that the connection was tight enough that I was like, I needed to use both hands. But there you go. That's how you do it. And it's not hampering it, but because of all that stuff, it I twisted it, it's already off of the peg. So I'll push it down again. Um, to make the connection between the ball joint and the peg come in. And let's see. Okay, turn like that. Yeah, that's how you do it. So, um, let me take it off again and put on the cape.
I'm going to do it with the cape again because I think the problem that we're going to be encountering is now we have to deal with the cape as well when we're putting this on. So like I said, okay, uh-huh. This goes behind here. Oh, wow. So now you have to put the Velcro in between the cape and the suit. Like so. Because it's Velcro, it's going to try to... Let me see. That's supposed to connect up, right? Wow. So let's do this. Let's unplug this first. And we gotta plug the back one first. Make sure that's plugged in low. And then connect the na the cape. Uh, it's too high. Connect it down by that much. And then connect the connector, making. Oh my gosh! Yeah, this is like. This is a pain. This is a one-time thing, guys. going to use this tool to kind of move things around I'm doing this real time so you can kind of see how much of an effort it is we know it, it, it's possible doing it because we did it without the cape before without the color before and everything so it's now it's just a matter of replicating the conditions that allowed me to do that. Okay, I think I got it. Wait, so how does this attach to this part when the cape's obstructing the velcro that was in here So I think the force or the the peg itself is the one that's basically going to be connecting that part so it's not connected to the velcro that was there originally. Um, but yeah there it's like it's connected. Actually connected way lower than it should be. Let's put the plate on. I think the next I connected it too much, but if I pull it up, I think it's going to come off.
you can still look down a little bit um, it feels like I did something wrong here pull that off so I made that really much more harder than it should be but it is possible to do it that way. So the cape is supposed to be on top of that. So you put this on. Then the cape goes on like that. Okay. Battery power is going out. That's the easier way of doing it. Look at that. That on. The collar is in there. The more I do it, the easier it gets. Put this on. Make sure this is sitting low. There you go. So the way they designed it is you have to make sure there's those three ribs on top that you're seeing. See? There you go. And now it's... That's actually now that I did the hardest version of it, doing this the, reg the, the way it should be, it's so much more easier. And put this on. So one of Justin's concern was this really should be more tapered. Uh, more um, pointed and it's not and I want to make sure this is looking good and he's right this thing should be more tapered like that But um, I'm okay with it because the price range is not at least five hundred or six hundred dollars. So there's the version that it should be. Yeah, I really think the proportion of the body in this one, in hand, it, it's it's good. I think. Um, yeah. Maybe like maybe lower this a little bit more. on this thing that keeps falling off. Let me open this up because I do believe this thing actually does open. I bet it does. Yeah. Yeah. Just hole in there and then you put on the smaller thing here inside. Now I'm putting it in there because I feel that adds more the look of it. Yeah, see? Put the other one in. Just be careful you don't snap off that small silver piece. Because once you do, then you're kind of screwed. You can kind of futz it up with the glue and everything, but it won't be the same as the original. I really feel like this should have been... I mean, it looks more realistic this way that it just clips on, but like a magnet would have been easier. Yeah, this this should be, should be tapered, but I... Eh, it's okay. It's okay for me, you know. Um, as difficult as it is, once you keep doing it, once you keep replacing it, it actually gets a little bit easier. You you just need to find that method that where you slip on the inner layer, uh, the inner color, and it just makes it much easier to put on afterwards. Um, I definitely do like the proportions of this one much better. Actually, actually, this is the most um, 
natural looking Batman unmasked that I have um, because of the, the addition of the color and everything because of the complicated process of putting it in there um, definitely makes it more realistic I think um, and you can have this one over here have it on display but to have this and then this one over here the hair just really throws me off though it's just like looking at it through the camera it doesn't seem so bad but it's just it's just so wide flared and then having this one over here it, it's kind of nice to have like uh, a version of Batman where he's like almost vulnerable when he put when he takes off his mask because that's what I'm seeing on this guy. Um, this really makes me mad that Hot Toys did this. This is the regular version, not the deluxe version of the Batman from Hot Toys. Um, you're gonna see. It's got a holster for the gun that he uses to put in his smoke bombs or whatever, right? It's empty, right? So I thought, okay, whoa, whoa, I must have missed something. And so I looked through my my accessories. I couldn't find anything. I looked, so I so I decided to look at the review. The first thing I looked was Justin's collection. And lo and behold, it did have a gun, uh, a smoke gun bomb to put in there. But then his was a deluxe version that come you know, it comes with a bat signal or whatever. So, okay, w wait, is that only a deluxe version accessory? So, so I had to look at other reviews from, uh, Will Foxification and another guy, JJ's Needful Things. And both of them do not have that gun. And I looked through those trays that, and I had, I looked through those videos and they didn't have it. They didn't mention any of it. And I'm, I'm so surprised that they didn't mention it because it just, like, why would you have a holster for a gun that you obviously made for the deluxe version and not put it in there? It's a small gun. Why am I so mad? Because, look, look at these clips. They put in the two smoke bombs in there that you can put in. Now, I'm displaying my, my figure, and all I can see is like a, an empty holster. The other thing that pissed me off is this cape, the secondary cape, is only for... When you're putting the figure on the motorcycle, this should have been included on the motorcycle because there's no way I'm going to display this figure. I'm not going to buy the motorcycle. So put this on the motorcycle and give me the gun. Why did you separate the gun into the deluxe accessories only? It's just, that's just so pissy. Um, I'm never going to see it. It's going to be behind there. I can kind of just forget about it, but it just makes me so mad because every time I look at it, and I forgot, and I forget, you know, years from now, I'm going to look at this and I'm going to forget all about it. I'm going to look at that all empty holster and think, oh, shit, I lost an accessory. And it's going to bug me the hell out of it. I'm going to go, go look through my boxes and I'm, and, and I'm going to get mad at myself for losing an accessory and come find out it never came with that anyway. Um, I just think that's a really, really rotten move. Um, and it just completely destroyed everything I said about this review or about this figure I'm you know it's a really surprisingly good figure but all that stuff is just big been negated by the fact that that accessory should have been included it's just so stupid that Hot Toys did that and chose to do that it should have been included and I'm surprised that nobody else in the videos that I've seen of reviewing the regular version nobody's even mentioned it nobody's even been mad about it I don't know if it's been mentioned in in the forums or anything I've been really not following the forums at, at all but it's just <sighs> that's so stupid so let me go on at this point and finish the review I just want to finish it and you're probably gonna hear the change of tone and from when I discovered that it's missing uh, because the rest of the first part of the review, it's all positive. It's all glowing. And then all of a sudden, you just go to that part. And it's just like stupid. <laughs> 